Hey, welcome to the Verge Mobile Show. We're back. It's exciting. And I am Dieter Bohm. I'm Dan Seifert. And I'm Chris Sigler. And this is episode 34, if you're wondering, and I know you were, it's the week of January 28th, 2013. I knew you cared a lot about that information as well. And we are in the post-CES pre-Mobile World Congress I would say doldrums, but we've got a ton of stuff that has popped this week, and I'm actually kind of surprised. We've got BlackBerry hitting tomorrow, we've got Nokia rumors, we've got HTC rumors, we've got an HTC event, we've got just a ton of stuff to talk about. Actually, Dieter, I'm going to challenge uh, your statement that this is episode 34. I believe... Ah, did I misread? I just read whoever handled the show notes. I believe this is episode 35. I, I believe. Don't, don't quote me on that, talk. but I think, yeah. No way. It might be. Really? You, weren't, you, weren't, uh, you weren't here last week. To you, it is episode 34. Well, why did, did somebody not update this? So, show notes so no, our, our, our notes are... This is really are, important for all our listeners. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> our notes are counting CES as, as not a number. This show we did not That's garbage. That's so, ridiculous. We need to fix um, that. We would have all of our uh, live listeners complaining to us, but we've... Uh, we're not running the chat uh, this week. It also isn't running, I believe, on the Verge cast. Uh, there's problems with that chat and so um, you know you can still email us verge cat, verge mobile show at the verge.com um, you could also tweet at us or you can post comments uh, but don't go crazy guys I mean come on it's you know you don't have that much to say really you know what they should do you know what our <laughs> listeners should do is they should they should start their own Google hangout in parallel to ours whoa and they they all hang out and chat and like video talk video chat with one another while we're doing the show live a shadow hangout? Yeah, a shadow yeah. hangout. That'd be pretty That's insane. Pretty awesome idea. Um, anyway, yeah, so like it's it's a surprisingly busy week of news, um, and we've got a lot of stuff to talk about, which I've said like eight times, and so I don't see why we don't just start doing that unless we want to hear Chris talk about how he sucks at getting his computer fixed. <laughs> no, my, I, I don't suck at getting my computer. It's, it is fixed. Uh -huh. I was just explaining before the show that uh -huh. I meant to pick it up. It's it's ready for pickup at the Apple Store. I meant to pick it up last night, and I, so I started wandering through Chicago on my way to the Apple Store, and I got uh -huh. sidetracked by uh -huh. one of my favorite coffee shops, Intelligentsia. Uh -huh. Was it open? Chicago. Yes, it was open. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, for those of you who live in L.A. or Chicago, you know that Intelligentsia is some of the finest coffee in the world. So I stopped in and then started working on a review that I can't talk about with you, unfortunately. Uh, and then uh, next thing you know, uh, a couple hours pass and the Apple Store Oh, what, so, Dieter, what is going on? Is that nothing? a pre-three? Maybe. <laughs> Wait, what's happening? <laughs> I'm just trolling you. <laughs> I showed up the mirror on a pre three on my uh, my my camera here. Oh my god! Uh, raised it up a little bit. Get that pre three out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> I have and not yet my put pocket. my SIM in it. I was thinking about it, but I haven't done it yet. I like I don't even know if the services still work. It's I probably need to do a doctor on it to get it going properly. Um, Every year you should review the pre three. Just pretend <laughs> like it's a new phone. Just be like pre three review. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, the uh, WebOS Nation did like a state of open WebOS after a year uh, last week, and it's you know it's a pretty <laughs> sad state of affairs. They're, I would imagine they're, they're running on some Galaxy Nexus hardware, but they don't have 3D acceleration going, and they can't get it you know buffers right yet. So they're working on it, but like HP's not doing anything. Yeah. Um, um, anyway, we should talk about new stuff, stuff that actually is going to be relevant and important uh, ever. <laughs> Burn. Yeah. Uh, so HTC uh, just today uh, invited us to go to an event on the 19th of February uh, in both New York and London, uh, I believe simultaneously. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They should be concurrent. Yep. Yeah. And so, I mean, there's two really big, interesting things about that. One is whatever the big, huge, interesting thing is that they're going to announce. And two, um, for the first time I can remember in a while, HTC isn't trying to, you know, make a big announcement at Mobile World Congress. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they've got plenty that they're saving up for Mobile World Congress that I'm just not expecting. But they're they're going the Samsung route. They're going the Apple route. They're trying to stand on their own two feet and announce a big old product without a trade show surrounding it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. No, it's, it's good. I, I yeah. look. I, I think that HTC has reached the point where they are more than entitled to do that. Um, I just fear, as an MWC goer, uh, and Dieter, as a, you're a goer, and Dan, you're a goer. I, I'm starting to fear for the quality of the announcements that we're going to get out of that show. And it, it's it's a little bit different from CES, where you know that you're going to be able to uh, still cobble together a really fascinating narrative about the goings-on in consumer electronics. MWC is so phone-focused that without these anchor announcements, um, it makes you wonder what the show is going to become. And and I think that, that what is going to happen in the short term is th- it's, going to c- it's going to be ceded to the Chinese companies um, and the, the Taiwanese companies. You're going to see Huawei and ZTE do interesting things, right? So uh, I, it's interesting that uh, HTC is deciding to, what we're presuming is separating itself from the main uh, MWC event because last year mm-hmm. uh, they had their big one series announcement and that was really everything that a lot of people took out of MWC last year. Even though the event yeah. happened early on in the show, there wasn't anything else that really detracted from that. The big news was HGC's big announce, and HGC made the show its own. So it's interesting to see that this year HGC feels compelled enough to uh, separate itself a week ahead of the event uh, and do its own thing, even though it's, it's apparently going to be quite big as it's in both New York and London. Yeah. I can't imagine that they'll they'll circle back and do another big announcement at MWC, but maybe they maybe they want to do some big one two punch. I, I just I don't know. I don't see that happening. Well, I mean, neither do I. To be to be perfectly blunt, we've only seen leaks of one important device, mm-hmm. right? That's the HTC M7. Um, we've seen. Uh, let's see. What's most recent thing is that it seems to share a lot of DNA wah, wah, with the uh, Droid <laughs> DNA. Uh, which is not a surprise at all. I think we can fully expect a, uh, a 1080p screen on this thing. And um, I think we can fully... I, I'm hoping that, you know, they're managing to reduce the size of the bezel even further so that they can, you know, make make it a smaller phone overall. And yeah. a 4.7-inch a screen at 1080p is pretty crazy. Like, that's crazy. Crazy. Um so yeah, I'm excited. I hope that it is available as more than just you know a droid or whatever. Uh, I also hope that it doesn't just get put on Sprint. Um, I and you know we've we've talked Sense to death, and so I really don't want to get into uh, you know my hopes for Sense Five. But you know we talked about it last week. I'm hoping it looks good. So I'm actually really interested to see what HTC has here. Um, I you know. I feel like everything we have to say about them, we've said, right? Like, hopefully they'll manage to get some traction with this. But the thing that's interesting to me about can HTC get traction is there's a lot less traction available to a company like HTC. Uh, We know that RIM is announcing BlackBerry 10 tomorrow. We know that all four U.S. carriers are going to support it. Uh, We also have something else uh, from Nokia that we're expecting soon. And Mm -hmm. um, we've got a post from Tom, which we'll talk about in a minute about it maybe being a hero device for Verizon. And you guys know my pet theory that uh, the phone that wins that's not called the iPhone is whatever phone Verizon decides to throw its, you know, marketing weight behind. <laughs> um, I mean, we saw at and trying to do it with 920, and, it, you know, it did fine, but it wasn't, you know, a barn burner. So, like, even if HTC managed to score major coups and got a bunch of support from carriers, especially in the U.S., I mean, there's only so much support to go around, right? And so I, HTC really has to just completely knock us off our feet for this thing to have a huge impact, especially going up against the Galaxy S3 and the iPhone 5. Well, so I, I think that with this device, uh, so let's assume that, that what they announced on the 19th is going to be this M7 that's been leaked, and let's assume that they can get it onto carrier shelves in a reasonable period of time. They might actually be opening up a nice little window uh, between that launch and the GS4. Right. Uh, which gives them, of course, I guess the same thing happened last year too. So um, I, realistically, we don't know how much of a window they're, they're going to have and how much of a financial impact that's going to have for them. But if they, can, if they can get that lead, that might be what they need to, uh, to, to, to make a splash with this thing because that is the elephant in the room. Uh, in the Android room, right, is is the uh, the GS4, and that product is obviously going to have a big impact, and I'm sure it's going to be available in all four U.S. nationals. So even if this this M7 also is, uh, the most they can hope for going up against the GS4 is a Samsung alternative. 
Right. Which well, is going to be mean, interesting to some people, but not everyone. And the, the thing to point out is, um, you know, if Samsung does what it did with the GS3 and the GS2, is like HTC's phone is probably going to look and feel nicer, nice, more, better, happier, timer designed. I'm totally sorry. <laughs> A happier um, design, yes. Yeah, but but it, but Samsung just, I mean, we've seen, you know, from, there was a story a couple weeks ago or three weeks ago about how much, just how much marketing money Samsung throws behind the Galaxy S3. It's insane. And right. against that, you know, juggernaut, I mean, there's only so much that HTC can do, and the best thing they can do is have an amazing device, and that's what they need to show us on the 19th. So yep. it needs to be an amazing device and amazing software because, you know, uh, with all things considered, last year with the One X, we all pretty much agreed that it was an amazing device hardware-wise, but we were let down by the software. Um, so if, a if HTC is able to improve Sense enough with this Sense 5 that we've seen leaked numerous times now um, to bring the software up to the level that the hardware is likely going to be at based on um, history, then that, that, that would be its best fighting chance for sure. Yeah, I, I remain cautiously optimistic that Sense 5 is going to be a very compelling skin. Um, and I know that Vlad disagrees with me, but he's not on the show this week, so he can That's stuff right. it. That's <laughs> right. Uh, I, I think that Sense 5, the leaks we've seen, we've seen precious little of this UI, but from yeah. what I've seen, I'm cautiously optimistic that they're moving in the right direction. I know that I've said that before. I said it was Sense 4, but, uh, but this is definitely an, a noted improvement, and it looks... It looks uh, the most different. It looks like the biggest evolutionary jump uh, in Sense since the introduction of Sense on Android with 1.6, I think. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know. I, I mean, obviously, we'll have to see when, it, when it's launched, but I think that might be a stretch to say, Chris. Yeah, well, put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> five, five, $5 says that Sense 5 is better than Sense 4. <laughs> five American dollars. Five American dollars. <laughs> to say that Sense Five is better than Sense Four. Yeah, um, I will. I don't know if I'll take that bet. Oh snap! Okay, that's you're not. I'll saying... say. I'll say. Uh, no, no, I, because uh, you're saying that Sense Five is going to be the biggest, you know, evolutionary leap since you know the original Sense, and I think Sense Three Six to Sense Four was a huge difference, like a huge dramatic leap. So listen, uh, you guys, we're not talking about the most important. Uh, software and UI design story that we have right now with regard to HTC, and we really need to because uh, it's a huge, it's a titanic shift in uh, my thinking about how phones work, and that's this new HTC Mini Bluetooth phone. Well, maybe, maybe thing. as Chris <laughs> mentioned the earlier, ridiculous. There's this the HTC is planning a one-two punch. Maybe this is the two punch. Oh uh, my god, coming <laughs> NWC. If you're not familiar with what we're talking about, in it's in, they released it in China, right? They're mm -hmm. bundling it with the butterfly in China, and it is a little tiny phone with a little keypad and a little tiny screen and send and end things, and it's it's basically just a, a Bluetooth headset that has got some controls for like dialing and answering calls and whatnot, and and, and a so display and a display. So it, you know it pairs up over NFC and it probably you know gets your contacts and stuff from. Uh, the phone, so the phone probably like it'll you know you can send your contacts over Bluetooth, so it's basically like like a Bluetooth car stereo, basically. Um, yeah. And I mean, <laughs> this is just I mean, okay. I, I uh, Look, there, if, there there must be there is some cultural context on I'm not seeing. Hmm. Look, if the phone docked, you remember that that old Verizon phone that had uh, like an a internal Bluetooth headset Bluetooth that you headset? Could pop yeah. out of it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. If this HTC Mini docked inside the butterfly, <laughs> I would be I would be cool with it. Which, arguably enough, the butterfly is probably big enough to do this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I would be able to get down with that. It's, yeah, no, nothing. There's nothing else to say about the Mini other than oh it's... oh, and also if it played like the original Snake, that yeah. would be <laughs> that would be huge. But I don't know if they'd be able to secure the rights from Nokia for that. I mean, it's, man, so many things that are wrong. I, another thing to charge, does it have a camera on it, too? No. Uh, I don't know, it's got it a, it's, like a camera. Can you use uh, it as a remote control to control the, the main yes. camera? Wait, yes, it, it doubles as a remote shutter trigger for the butterfly's camera, according oh to Boom. Uh, our coverage. Boom. I want this thing in my life. Look, <laughs> it, can, it can't cost... 
it, as an accessory, it can't possibly cost more than like a hundred bucks, right? So you you know you buy it at the same time that you buy your on contract Droid DNA, for instance. Yeah, I'm I'm down. Count me in. <laughs> I, I'm I'm on board this crazy train that HTC is pulling up to the station. Count me in. <laughs> Um, I have nothing else to say other than Godspeed you, crazy train rider. Um, so, uh, Rim, tomorrow, we're, it's happening. They're announcing BlackBerry 10. They promised to have a couple more surprises. They have a Super Bowl ad that they've teased. They've already talked about the fact they've got a bunch of movie studios on board to sell movies and rent movies. Um, we had a leak that it looks like, and this is the most interesting part, it looks like Vodafone in the UK might be selling this thing like right away, the Z10. That would be good. That would be very good for them. The, the last thing they need to do is to do a Microsoft Surface style announcement <laughs> where they show a phone without any date or price and say, eh, this will come eventually. They need yeah. to strike while the iron is hot. Yes. Yeah, I mean, they, they just they need to release it on uh, all the carriers. Have they set a carrier number? Mm. Uh, I, I know Rim. Remember. Yeah, Rim has said like that over 150 carriers have it in testing. Um, so uh, they're definitely pushing that it's going to be available worldwide on yeah. as many carriers as possible. I do mean, you think? Yeah. Do you think there's any chance that they'll show a tablet tomorrow? Mm, no, I don't. Based on tell you that why. nothing has leaked, uh, right. I would say no, whereas the Z10 uh, has leaked to high heaven. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't the think only, there's anything we the don't know about it. The device that I can remember in the past, like, literally, like, eight years that hasn't leaked was whatever the last phone was that got released on T-Mobile because literally nobody cared. <laughs> um, so like, the, the curve, whatever, whatever. I think yeah. it was a <laughs> fifteen. I, I I try to remember the name of this phone every single week, and I can never remember it, and I never bother to look it up afterwards because yeah, of how exactly. little I care. Right. Yeah. So like the way that I don't know. I mean, you know, we see Apple stuff leak. Uh, you know, we see Android stuff leak. We see everything leak these days. And Rim sort of led the charge on that stuff back in the day. Uh, and you know, they they get their stuff out to testers. They get their stuff out to their corporate partners and. It, it leaks, and I, you know, did the playbook leak? I want to. Well, they announced that one they, really early. They, they, they showed the playbook playbook early. off, like yeah, they they yeah. they showed it off like what a dozen times before it officially announced. So yeah, if they mention, I see, it's a really bad idea for them to even mention a tablet because if they tease it like, hey, in six months you'll have this, then it all will just be all standing around talking about when's the tablet coming. Who's going to care about the tablet? And we won't be talking about the phones, which presumably are coming much much sooner. Uh, right. So it's still pretty go. crazy that. All things point to Rim, you know, releasing an t- all touchscreen uh, uh, version, uh, way ahead of a, a, a keyboard model. Of, of yeah. Well, not way ahead, right? It's still going to be in the same quarter or half of the year. I suppose. Yeah, I guess it's it's supposed to be. But we but the, the, we've seen very few leaks of the the keyboard model. We've seen it on yeah. camera a couple times, but uh, nothing like we've seen of the Z10 itself. So um, it's just kind of interesting that you know. You know what I want? What do you hmm. want? Portrait slider. I don't. I don't want a pre three. I mean, I do, but I want. I want. I want them to do the torch right with this new OS. I want a portrait slider. I really do. I'm willing to have a fat phone in order to have a physical keyboard and a big. I, I got to be honest with you. Together. I'm on the exact opposite end, and I know mm, that like there's no, you're, it's there's, you're there's wrong. writers. I'm on the end of right, and you're on the end of stupid. <laughs> I mean, a, a couple of years ago, I would have totally agreed with you that, you know, a portrait keyboard is, like, the, the best thing ever for text input. But, like, you know, today's phones are so much more responsive. The autocorrect is so much better. I'm so much faster on a touchscreen keyboard than I am with a physical keyboard. While you were just uh, soliloquizing there, I just tapped out the Gettysburg address on the physical keyboard on this Pre-3. <laughs> I just want to... No, you didn't, because uh, the space bar probably wasn't responding, so it was all one big word. <laughs> <laughs> Insert stock comment about thinking the venue pro is the greatest portrait slider ever made. <laughs> uh, I seriously, they need to take the the chassis of that phone and just upgrade the. I mean, if they can keep the HD two alive for a decade, they can <laughs> they can certainly upgrade the venue pro. 
Just drop whatever on it. Put 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 a jelly bean or put BlackBerry ten. I don't care. Just put something on it. Listen, Rim is the only company that cares about physical keyboards. Period. Right, which is what's so crazy about them releasing the touchscreen model first. Especially given that all of their other like all touchscreen phones have like been miserable, nightmarish pieces. So, Dieter, I'm going to uh, send you a link to uh, Steve Jobs' um, a keynote from uh, Macworld 2007 when he introduced oh, I, really? the iPhone. I've never, I've never, never, heard, never seen that. Never, <laughs> was it good? Did he? Uh, well, he made some very interesting and I think uh, important points about mm. why physical keyboards are stupid. <laughs> right. The, the, um, the, but the, what about the portrait slider, man? None, none of those points about having more screen real estate apply when you've got a magic keyboard that can slide out from underneath your screen. I guess if you want to. If, if I had a 4.7 inch device like a Nexus 4 here and I slide the keyboard, you know how massive that would be? It would be like the most unwieldy thing ever. I you mean, it's already it. pretty unwieldy. I mean, look, there is nothing cooler than getting done with a call and hanging it up, just <laughs> slamming the phone closed. Well, the yes. weird and thing like answering the phone, just popping it open. Like, when you pop open a portrait slider, you're like, I'm going to get stuff done now. I almost swore there. Um, and, <laughs> and, like, you know, slide to unlock, tap your little code in. No, I just want to be like, pow. I mean, I guess that's all cool until the thing starts Oreo rotating on you. <laughs> 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 no, but they, they, they did okay with the Torch hardware, right? They did all right. I mean, it wasn't the sexiest thing ever, but they did okay. I guess the hardware was all right. I mean, the screen was terribly terrible, and the software was obviously a nightmare. Um, but well, the, the weird thing to me is that every carrier seems intent on offering one, like, crappy low to mid-range landscape slider, but yeah. no one... Yeah, but who's doing that? Hang on, who's doing that anymore? Even, yeah, even those are like... Saw a crappy landscape slider. I guarantee you that if you're T-Mobile and you go to Samsung and say, crap us out a landscape <laughs> Android phone, <laughs> crap us Samsung, out a... <laughs> Samsung is going to say, excuse me, I need to use the bathroom, and they're going to come back five minutes later with a, lands- with a mid-range with, landscape. With the smiley. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> that because that is the kind of service Samsung offers, and and so the tragic thing about this is that at, at four inches or higher, that like landscape keyboards are just stupid. There's no way to I use just, them. Yeah, I mean a four inch landscape keyboard phone, man. I mean you gotta you gotta take a lot of fiber to pull that off. <laughs> exactly. I mean squeezing out. Yeah. Okay. Just, <laughs> we can, guys, we can the take smiley. A... I can't, I'm just. Uh... You're talking about the emoticon. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 That was amazing. <laughs> that wasn't Android, right? That was uh, just running whatever. That was an RTOS. <coughs> yeah. I think. It yeah, probably has chat on on it, though. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, I just, I'm really proud that we brought Dan to tears. That makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? The Nexus 4 is actually on sale for Really Real. Dan mentioned before the show. Tell us the joke you said, because it was a funny So, thing. uh... I'm just double checking my sources here, and my sources being the Play Store. Uh, but as of the time that we went on air, you could still buy the Nexus 4 in the Play Store, which means that it has been over four hours in a row that you've been able to place an order for the Nexus 4, which might be a like new record by about three and a half hours. But Longest it's like continuous availability of the Nexus 4 in the US. And it is still ever. available, yes. yes. But it's like it, they must have been stockpiling inventory for the past, like, 12 weeks. I mean, it's been so long since you could buy a Nexus 4 online that, like, they must have just waited until they had an entire warehouse piled to the ceiling with these things, and then they flipped the, the switch. Yeah. That's my only guess. And and you can buy the bumper now, and, uh, you know, obviously 8 and four, uh, 16 gigabyte variations. You still uh, can't get the touchstone, though. No. And no, and there, there's no... Charging else, orb. Which yeah. is insane. You can 3D print your own touch or charging or dock. It's not, you know, the full magnetic charge, but yeah. Instead of calling it the touchstone, they should have called it the feel rock. They didn't call it a touchstone. No, I know. I know, but I'm saying that, that they could have called it the feel rock, and then, Thanks. like, it would have been, like, a, you know, synonym thing. <laughs> All right, who's got Never mind. That just, that just makes me think of LG and, like, the Y screen, which is its variation of Samsung's smart stay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we also saw a leak of a white Nexus 4, which looks fine. I think all of us want it. Yeah, I would yeah. buy that. Can, so you imagine, 
Can you imagine if that had LTE? Like, I would die on oh the spot. God. I would just yeah. die. I would perish. I'm back on yeah. the Nexus 4 this week um, and after having used the iPhone 5 for a couple of weeks, and the battery life isn't quite as ridiculously bad as I remember, but it's still, like, not great. And I still... I, I, I gave up and went down that dark hole of, of uh, rooting it and putting a custom ROM on it just because Did of you life. really? Yeah. Did uh, it I mean, I, uh, Yeah. Uh, where's, let's see where I'm at today. I'm at 69%. It's been off of the charger for 10 hours. Oh, it sounds like uh, you have a Nexus 4 Max. Yeah, I'm at 69%. <laughs> I've been off since 6 a.m., so that's 6, 7, 8 hours. Yeah, so, so you're, you're, you didn't have the same issues. Like, mine would be dead by 3 p.m. if I yeah. hadn't done that. So. I just want to point out that I was up at 6 a.m. yet again today. I believe I called you. Uh, no, you called me at seven. I was already awake. Oh, okay. Yeah, I called you at six though. <laughs> right. Yes, you called me at six a.m. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and like, uh, they just don't to talk about the Nexus about... Four. No, like Android OS twenty four percent. What does that mean? What is doing it? I don't same, know. Same thing. Maps eleven percent. Well, maps I know because latitude is the worst, and you can't. You I can't turned it turn off. off. No, but if you turn it off, then um, Google Now is not as good as it ought to be. Wait, really? Google Latitude still exists? Yeah, I know, right? Well, it's like the you know keep locate keep track of your location over time feature and whatever. Um, anyway, um, man, we are just jamming through topics. We haven't even been on the air for half. So an hour. about the white Nexus Four, I really yes. want it. I have no hopes that it'll ever be available for sale, uh, just because we saw the white Galaxy Nexus uh, mm-hmm. as well, and like Google never sold that directly. I don't know where you could even get one. Y- you could buy before. that. I mean, like you could. Yeah, I mean, you the the white Galaxy Nexus was one of those phones where like if you knew somebody who knew somebody who knew a guy who stood in the in some dark alley, you could go like <laughs> talk to him and like he would open his trench coat and he would be one he would be nude, but then two he would have <laughs> he would have some white Galaxy Nexuses. <laughs> under his trench coat, and like you could buy one for twelve hundred dollars. It was that kind of phone, and I have a feeling this is going to be the same thing. Which See, means I, that uh, I need to have one. Like I just need yeah. to have it. Well, you it's just like want to have the experience. It's, of the it's like the white Sega Game Gear when I was at, when I was twelve years old. Like it, it was the same situation. Like you had to import one from Japan. It was insane. Also, with the Galaxy Nexus, you couldn't get the the stupid extended battery for the GSM version unless, like, you went to Korea and, like, you know, had a dinner with an LG, or, I mean, a Samsung executive, <laughs> you know, like, it was it, it was the exact same situation. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, so the, the thing that I want, the, the unicorn uh, Nexus 4 that I want, even not counting LTE, is replace the glass back with the ridiculously thin... Uh, plastic back from you know the Galaxy Nexus or some other phone, and just use that extra space for battery. Give me an extra couple hundred milliamps. That would be awesome. I'd be yeah. done with that. Yeah. That'd be good. I mean, to be fair, the battery in it is already pretty big, right? It's twenty one hundred or something. Uh, just make the software more efficient. There's no reason that a twenty one hundred milliamp hour battery not running on LTE can't last like the whole day and beyond. Right. Well, here's here's what sucks. Like, um, I, I, I I picked up my my parents' iPhone 4S recently. I was like, holy crap, this is a really thick phone, and that that pisses me off because like th- like three or four months ago or, or five months ago, I would have never dreamed that thought. But like it, now, I've I've become accustomed to these stupid seven millimeter thick phones, and now I can't use a nine millimeter thick phone. Like Tell they should pre three. Should've... Just just go back to the tank. You used to be the guy that wanted. You used to be the guy that was all about the resound. You thought that that was okay. Oh was my like, god, no. resound was awesome. The, oh the resound, oh, was a great first 720p phone in the U.S. Resound was um, awesome. The <laughs> I'm just saying that they, sh- they should have they should have never gone from nine to seven ish. Quit hating on resound. And they would have, <laughs> I'm gonna read through the screen. Look, man, I'm gonna be in like, California. I like my phones. I, I'm going to be in, thick, well, yeah, you're gonna be, you're gonna be in California, California but you're going to be too afraid to come to the city. You're going to like stay no. a couple hours south just to you know be safe. No, I'm I'm going to come to California on Friday and I'm going to I'm going to personally see to it that that I I slap you with a glove like you know, <laughs> a, a gentleman's fight. 
Uh, anyway, I have they, gloves for you, Chris. By the way, they should have. Well, uh, no, I'm, I'm going to use uh, studded so, gloves. So, so just so to keep our readers in the loop, you guys are going to find out eventually on the website, but um, theverge.com. But I'm super jealous of why Chris is going to California, and you guys are going to find to out to visit me in the near future. Of course, you're not. I, I actually have a cameo in Terminator Five. Uh, uh, are you sure it's not Fast Six? I was going to say. <laughs> well, imagine. So, hang on, hang on. Imagine a Terminator Fast mashup. Oh, it's your my face is gonna <laughs> melt off, Peter. Stop. Uh, now the, the Fast Six, the Fast Six trailer premieres this Sunday, and I'm like, I can barely contain myself <laughs> uh, during the Super Bowl. And uh, it, it was just confirmed last week that Arnold is going to be in Terminator Five, which is also pretty exciting. So Chris, uh, the full disclosure, Chris is going to California to see a screening of Fast Six. That would be that would make my life. Uh, but but no. Anyway, back to my original point. I don't know how we ended up on this tangent. I don't know. All what I'm saying was, they but... should have never gone below nine millimeters, and they should have just making the inside of the phone thinner and used that remaining space for battery, and everyone would have been happy. Fine. It's hard to sell a new phone. They're like I, I can totally see where they're coming from, though. Like it's a lot easier to sell a new phone as it's new and thinner and lighter. No, and didn't the didn't the nine twenty sort of try the tank? Yeah, but we kind of we kind of pan over here. here. But the nine twenty doesn't even have oh, great God, battery. So I mean, it's it's not bad battery life, but it's not great. It's not particularly amazing. So didn't we kind of tear it apart for being heavy and thick? <laughs> yeah. Should I do the full like weightlifter squat? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, so let's uh, talk Nokia. 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Nokia Laser. Lasers. Uh, flagship Windows Phone on Verizon. What do we know about the laser? So it sounds like the laser is going to be basically a, a CDMA slash LTE 700 block C slash AW, well, presumably AWS version of the <laughs> of the catwalk. Let's definitely Man, just, just keep like, talking about like the spectrum. All That's what's the interesting, interesting here. things about that we know about the laser just like suck them all out. <laughs> F all y'all, okay? We have people, we definitely have people on this, listening to this show right now yeah. who appreciate Spectrum the way I appreciate it. Why did this turn into the Troll Chris show? I don't understand. She doesn't deserve it. Uh, it does make it easy, though. So, so the, the laser will probably be a carrier variant of the catwalk, which is expected to be uh, the successor to the 920, which I believe we're expecting to see announced at MWC. So, th so the catwalk could actually end up being the most interesting thing to happen in Barcelona. Uh, right. And this is, it sounds like Nokia is going to go back to aluminum construction, which is something they haven't really done since the N8. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's exciting news. I mean, I, I thought that Nokia has, has done a really amazing job with their polycarbonate shells, but I can see why they would want, like, they probably feel a little left out by the aluminum trend. Well, I mean, you could definitely make a phone thinner with aluminum than you can right. with, with polycar. I mean, poly's got to have some thickness for rigid, uh, um, rigidness. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm with you, Chris. I love the the uh, the polycarbonate shell. But does anyone think it's kind of crazy that uh, Nokia just announced the 920 in October, and here we are in February and expecting to see its success, uh, successor announced? Like, that is... Four months. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do think it's a little bit crazy. But, I mean, let's not forget that there's Apple and there's everybody else, and everybody else is on the faster cycle. Of, they know when they release a new phone, they bump sales. And I, I think that we can expect it from RIM, to be perfectly honest. They're using, you know, off-the-shelf parts. I think, you know, I mean, it's not fair to say, uh, you know, HTC is or Nokia is or even RIM is, but, I mean... To be honest, the chips are the chips, and they don't need to spend a year developing this stuff. They just, you know, they can put it together, put a body on it, design it well, and and put it out there. So I think it's uh, it's just par for the course now that we should expect that everybody but Apple is going to be on a faster cycle. Uh, Samsung is the only company to really buck that trend, and it's doing quite well for them. But uh, I think everybody well, else, they can't compete need to, on marketing need to be dollars, clear so they've got to compete on... Samsung's uh, doing quite well with that because, A, it's doing that on the high end, but it's also l just, like, uh, spraying the market with everything at every price point right. and every size and, and everything like that. 
So do you think that if like the 920 had actually taken off and done better that they would spend more time on the catwalk as replacement? Like is it they basically put these things out there, see if they catch fire, and if they don't, they're like, well, let's not try and let this one burn for much longer, let's replace it. Yeah, I have to believe that's the philosophy. I mean, if the 920 was a runaway hit and they were selling by the tens of millions, I, I doubt that they would be. I mean, look at the GS3. The, it's been on a slow burn for the past year. or Well, it will have been on a slow burn for a year by the time the GS4 comes around. And I, I don't know why, why Nokia wouldn't like to be on that. I'm sure that that's every OEM's dream is to be on that cycle. Right. And and I guess you know, uh, depending on how things go for Nokia, it doesn't have a uh, Nokia's dream was to have high end phones on every single carrier in the yeah. U.S. at least, and, and right now it's just AT and T. So, and speaking yeah. of AT and T, we've got the EOS, which is apparently going to be a quote unquote true pure view handset for AT and T. Is that right? That's that's what our our, our guy uh, Tom yeah. Warren is saying, and he knows yeah. his things. I, this actually makes me excited because um, I would love to. to I'm I, sure. I, I'm I sure Canon is really excited about that code name too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I I really loved the 808's camera when I reviewed it. I mean, it was like absolutely mind blowing what you could do with the the video and the, the pictures and stuff like that. So uh, having that in a much more capable smartphone would be quite a, a treat. And that's the dream that everyone's been waiting for when we learned that Pure View was coming to the Lumia line. Yeah. Well, so one problem here, and we knew this was going to happen, Nokia has already diluted the PureView brand, right? Because they they called the camera on the 900 a PureView, I think? Was no, it? the 920 they did. 920. 920, 920. Yeah. yeah. Right, okay. So they've all, you know, I don't know how they go back to, like when this comes out, do they say, no, really, for real this time, it's a PureView? Or like, are they going to come out with like another name for it or, you know? How are they going to reestablish the uniqueness of that device? PureView Plus. PureView Plus, Plus I like it. Yes. Pure Plus View. PureView Plus. That's yeah. that's exactly what they need to do. Um, I, I want to go back to to one thing you were saying a minute ago about like um, like you know the chips are are out there uh, for for the, the uh, for the Blackberries. You guys remember uh, a couple years ago when yeah, I know Mike, yeah. Mike Lazaridis was. At D nine or or D eight or D nine, and he he was like, oh, you know, we're, we can't do a BlackBerry ten phone until they have dual core chips. Well, here they here, you know, we are like eighteen or months or twenty four months later. They missed an entire cycle on that. We're into quad core now. I mean, come on. Well, he also they also tried to say that uh, BlackBerry ten was delayed because LTE wasn't available with the chips that they wanted and things like that. Yeah. They they were they were they were issuing a lot of blame to their component suppliers, which yeah. frankly did not deserve the blame. <laughs> right. Uh, I got nothing else to say about Nokia. I mean, I, I hope we see this stuff at Mobile World Congress. Otherwise, like, I don't know what we're gonna see at Mobile World Congress. We're gonna see uh, ZTE releasing a six point two inch phone. Oh my god. <laughs> And uh, and if we're lucky, no, we won't see the Note three there. That's gonna be Efa. Yeah, that's gonna be Efa. I mean, yeah. the, the only chance of any, I mean, there's the, the Note eight point or whatever uh, that mm-hmm. we've seen leaked a couple times. That's a tablet. I wish that was a phone. I really I, wish that was gonna be a phone. <laughs> I just hope awesome. that we see a, a Beam two. Um, oh, beam two, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Samsung can uh, uh, follow up last year's awesome MWC announcements. Yeah, blockbuster. Uh, but obviously Samsung does its own thing and, and we don't really expect to see anything huge there. Yeah. Uh, Pebble. Uh, we reviewed it. Neil, I reviewed it. He likes it. I think, and, uh, his, I th- his, I think we uh, all want one. Yeah. I mean, yes and no. I, <laughs> well, I, I just don't think, like, I, I think the Pebble is like a really exciting product and I, I'm really happy to see that, that somebody has finally pushed the notion of a smartphone into like the mainstream headspace or at least the smart mainstream n- nerd headspace right uh, smartwatch yes um, so but like the thing with the pebble is like I'm happy with what it is now but uh, you know in six months uh, I anticipate being unhappy with you know it hasn't kept up with development. And I really think that if Apple or Google decide they want to get into the space because they control the platforms directly, they can do much more interesting things. And so they control the platforms, and they also have 
gobs and gobs of leverage with um, with uh, you know manufacturers and right. component suppliers at their disposal. Right. So either one of those companies could you know uh, on a whim turn around the most amazing smartwatch anyone has ever seen. Yeah. Um, so like Pebble's great, and uh, you know the thing that I said in our uh, best of CES thing was that you know sometimes you need to remove the bell so you can make a better whistle. Um, and they did that. Like they they made it work for the things that it does as best as they could, and they didn't overshoot what they were trying to do. And that'll come later, hopefully. Um, and we've actually we've seen a lot of other smartwatches be way too ambitious. So, so this is this is crazy, but I'm going to draw this parallel anyways. Okay. But uh, Pebble is to the smartwatch what uh, the original iPhone was to the smartphone. Uh, in that the original iPhone, when it was first released, was really kind of a dumbed down thing, just like you were saying. Uh, that Pebble is. There's a, there was a lot of features missing, but the features that it had worked very well, and it was very accessible to a larger number of people than what had come previous. Uh, mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of smartwatches on the market. Chris has reviewed, I think, every single one of them, or at least used every single one of them. Uh, and all of them tried to do a lot of things, and they all kind of fail because either they're too cumbersome to use, or their hardware doesn't live up to their expectations and things like that. Whereas the Pebble is more or less, if you know, you're into so if you're a type of person that would actually think about wearing a smartwatch, you can probably use the Pebble without any issues, um, as far as getting it set up and, and working and things like that. Even though it doesn't have all of the features that you might want eventually. If your smartwatch runs Android, you blew it. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true, uh, and I, I feel like um, I feel like. The, the end game for all of these guys, and I said this in my MetaWatch review last year, I think that the end game, the only way to really make this a successful industry is to target the, the very same uh, clientele that wristwatches have been targeting for a century, which is, uh, you know, people who are looking for a fashion accessory, and it's just that this happens to be a very smart fashion accessory, and in order to do that, you need to take the core... You take the guts of something like a pebble and make it available in, you know, literally 75 or 100 different styles. You need to be, walk, be able to walk into the fossil store in your local mall and you, they have an entire case of smartwatches that all look completely different because people don't want uh, a single uh, wristwatch. They want one that looks good to them and works for their style. Right. And we're a long way from that. So the... Uh, the only way to make this a viable ecosystem is if the gatekeepers want there to be a viable ecosystem. Uh, you know, the Pebble does okay with what's supported by Bluetooth and what's supported by iOS and by Android. Um, but where's the motivation other than us clamoring for there to be an ecosystem for either of these companies to improve that? Especially if they're working on their own watches, right? Like, why would Apple... Uh, work to develop a vibrant multi-manufacturer smartwatch ecosystem when they could just own the entire thing. Yeah, this is true. And, and you know, I, I think that Apple, I mean, I, I don't know what Apple is doing there. I, 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 I kind of want to believe that they intentionally moved the iPod Nano away from that form factor to make room for a future product. Mm -hmm. And I, I've, I've heard rumblings, in fact, Dieter, I think we were exchanging emails about this. Uh, I've, I've heard rumblings that, that uh, third-party developers are seeing some, like, weirdness. They're seeing, like, the, you know, the, the framework, the, the scaffolding for uh, a really full-featured and, and, and rich uh, Bluetooth low-energy, uh, uh, you know, s ecosystem inside iOS 6, but it's not fully implemented. And they think that parts are kind of being kept under wraps or they're only partially exposed for, for exposure in, say, iOS 7, along with maybe the launch of, of something like an iWatch. So, that, you know, that, that's certainly a possibility. And, and Apple's probably the only company, well, Google, too. They, they could both create, I think, a very commercially successful uh, product like that that goes on the wrist. But long term, I truly believe that if, if, if you're going to make a, a smartwatch Industry. The only way to do it is to uh, is to make it uh, make it a wristwatch, and and that's something that no one has done yet, except for uh, Casio and Citizen, who are of course traditional pl uh, wristwatch players. And Citizen has the proximity, which is a gorgeous watch, and from a distance you can't tell, even up close, you can't tell that it's 
a Bluetooth watch and its fatal flaw is that it can't give you alerts for messages, which is insane. Um, yeah. And Casio makes a Bluetooth 4.0 G-Shock, which just looks like a regular G-Shock, but it also can't alert messages. So I don't. Those are both Japanese companies, and I don't know if there's like some I, like I don't know if maybe like me- message alerts are not a big deal there, maybe, and and so that's why they didn't think to include them. But it's completely insane to me. Moving on. Awkward transition. Uh, do we want to talk about this? Um, the fact that if a carrier doesn't want you to, it's now technically illegal to unlock your phone if it's subsidized by a carrier, thanks to a uh, lapsing of a thing that the Library of Congress did for from the DMCA. Like everything about this, just like makes me sad. Yeah, I you know I don't want to uh, advocate crime, but you all should unlock. Your phone. <laughs> so okay, what's it's the civil dis- here? It's like, civil disobedience. It's not. It's right. not a crime. It's civil disobedience. I don't know why the DMCA is like part of this. I mean, it's a justification that like technically the carrier owns a phone because it's subsidized, so, and so therefore they can say what it is and it belongs to them. What's so, what's so crazy about this story is that like it wasn't voted on. It wasn't you know uh, uh, vetted by anybody. It was you know a librarian of Congress that read the DMCA in a certain way, interpreted it to mean this, and then like yeah. enacted this. And well, but it, that's how I that's mean, how it got freed in the first place. It was a librarian of Congress. So I mean, don't hate on librarians, yo. I'm just saying, not librarians as a whole, but this particular judgment was maybe a lapse, or maybe it was heavily influenced by lobbying, which is really what I kind of think happened. Um, and unfortunately, uh, all of us uh, that are interested in unlocking our phones are kind of getting the raw deal on it because of this interpretation. I'm so, unlocking uh, my phone right now. Yeah, <laughs> I guess the idea is you can you can still you can theoretically buy unlock phones easily, and so they don't need to protect consumers anymore. I mean, kind of. Can you? I mean, so, like. like where this really burns you, though, is I, I was actually talking about this uh, with some friends of mine who are not, like, super into into phones and things like that. And they were like, well, why do I care? If I, if I you know, buy a phone from at and I'm going to have to have service from at and anyways, and I'd have to pay a, t- a termination fee to switch to T-Mobile and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, that's all fine and dandy when you're at home, but as soon as you travel into another country and you want to put a local SIM card in, uh, you can't, and then you're stuck paying your exorbitant roaming fees that are set by uh, carriers that you might have never heard of. Um, and, and that's where it really kind of gets you if you don't have the ability to unlock your phone. Hmm. You're just shakes his head. <laughs> uh, no, it's like, uh, so, I mean, you know, I unlock phones all the time when it was illegal. I'm going to continue to do it now that it's illegal again. We See you in prison, bro. Net- yeah, we just had this nice brief, you know, six six month period where like we had sanity, and now it's gone, and that makes me sad. You'd have all these uh, these cell phone these notorious cell phone unlockers on death row. You're gonna be, gonna be one our of our pris- our prisons filled with cell phone unlockers. Yeah, <laughs> man, cell phone unlocking is a gateway drug. It is something else. Jailbreaking. Yeah. Jail- yeah, well, no, jailbreaking's still okay. Jailbreaking's cool. Yeah, but I, w- I want the double entendre. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh, we haven't talked... Oh, my God. We have, there's a brand new version of iOS, and like that's... Well, big well deal, theoretically. A point one update. I yeah. wouldn't call that a brand new version. Let's just say I'm not seeing uh, Johnny Ive's uh, influence yet. In right. Six- in fact... Maybe you in are. Fact, maybe you are. It's going Maybe the opposite direction because the one design thing that I've noticed is if you are using the music player on the lock screen, the controls are different and they're aluminumized now. So, yeah. so oh <laughs> no. <laughs> so oh, there's there's, <laughs> there's one other design thing too. Uh, if you go into Passbook now, there's there's a new card that's like, hey, this is Passbook. It's awesome. Like because I, I I suspect that no one was using Passbook, so they felt compelled to put a card in there so that people know what the heck. Passbook, passbook is right. Ah, isn't that something? Yeah, it, sure, it's a card. So often I use a passbook. But. It has a it has a button in there that that takes you out to the uh, the app store um, with a, a view of like all the passbook enabled apps. Right. 
And to be I fair, I mean, for one thing, and that's Starbucks. And- no, I, I've actually used it quite a bit. Like, I use it for Starbucks. I use it for United. I'll use it for Lufthansa, um, and Walgreens. Because you fly Lufthansa all the time. Yeah, dude. <laughs> When, I, when I'm flying between Chicago and New York, it's always a Lufthansa flight. Yeah. No. Uh, but but I am actually flying Lufthansa to MWC next month, so I'm looking forward to sampling their passbook integration. You know, I don't know who I'm flying. I'll have to look. You're flying Air France. Paris. I'm flying Air yeah. France. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah, I knew that. I sent you that email. Uh-huh. Right. I know more about your itinerary than, than you do. It's slow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What, what plane is is Dieter flying on? What kind of what kind of plane, Chris? Probably an A three thirty would be my guess, but I don't know that for a fact. I'm on a seven sixty seven. That's all I know. All I know is it's going to be uncomfortable and everybody cramped and unhappy. Yeah, and uh, perhaps it'll be something to write about. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> So Chris wrote up this uh, really great breakdown of Verizon sold a bunch of Spectrum to AT&T for a really exorbitant amount of money, or, and it's pending approval. Uh, Chris broke down exactly what that means this week, um, and it means that AT&T might not be using its uh, AWS Spectrum, right, Chris? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I was really. I mean, so I'm in I'm in an AT&T LTE market where they have a, like very very little bandwidth. Um, and there are, I think, five or six major markets nationwide where that's the case, where they kind of got shafted in the 700 megahertz um, auction. So they, they had both 700 and AWS standing by, but they'd only rolled out 700. Um, and the, the, the assumption for, for a long time now has been that they would eventually light up AWS, and indeed, all of AT&T's LTE phones support both 700 and AWS. Well, what has happened, there have been two major incidents in the past year that have led everybody, including myself, to start to believe that AWS does not factor into at ts plans. One, the, the first thing that happened was the breakup, not breakup, but the failure of the at t T-Mobile merger. And one of the, the terms of that failure was that at t would give T-Mobile a bunch of AWS spectrum, uh, which coincidentally has is one of the things that has really helped T-Mobile firm up its LTE plans between that and the Metro PCS purchase. Um, And then the the other thing that happened was this deal where Verizon uh, is giving, not giving, selling a bunch of 700 megahertz spectrum to AT&T, and AT&T is giving a bunch of AWS spectrum, mostly in Western markets, uh, to Verizon. So... You know, a couple of years ago, uh, Verizon was 100% all in on 700. AT&T was splitting its its prospects between 700 and AWS. And then now Verizon bought a bunch of AWS from Spectrum Co., that, that cable company consortium that we wrote about last year. Gave a little bit of that to T-Mobile to get the FCC off its back. And uh, now they're getting more from AT&T. So they've kind of flip-flopped. Uh, Verizon is, is going to go with two different bands. AT&T, at least in the short term, is all in on 700, it looks like. And then longer term, they'll be looking at the incentive auctions and, um, and WCS, which we wrote about. I have a report up on that. It's linked in, in the, um, the report I wrote last week. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's a very dramatic time to be following the Spectrum story in the U.S. But, but I mean, Chris, imagine – I'm sorry – Imagine if we saw companies playing these kinds of shenanigans and doing this kind of horse trading with, like, national park land, <laughs> right? I mean, that's what this is, right? Like, we were like, oh, yeah, you guys can go ahead and borrow the parks for a while. That's cool. you got to pay us some money for it, but, you know, make sure you do some public good with it, we guess. You know, because that seems nice. And then they just are just like... Just make sure you pay us some money for it. <laughs> yeah, like, like, oh, well, you want a little bit of Redwood? Well, I can give you some Yellowstone, but I don't know. It's like, <laughs> come on. So, so yeah, Chris, I, I, just regulate this stuff. I, just I have no idea. <laughs> just, Internally, just mount up and regulate. Inside, mount, yes, exactly. <laughs> Warren G. <laughs> AT&T, uh, I would love to understand. I would have loved to have been a fly in the wall in some of these internal meetings in, in AT&T where they decided to not deal with AWS. Because I, I don't yeah. know what... I don't know if they just wanted to concentrate on 
on 700 because uh, of its superior uh, uh, building penetration uh, and uh, you know it's because of you complaining about Chicago signal basically. Well, Actually, so you know what it is. You know what it is. You know what it is. They're hmm. at a board meeting and they talk about AWS and someone's like AWS. It smells like. It smells like T-Mobile. We hate them now. <laughs> and they just said no. And they just killed them. That's so, in, hey, that's entirely possible. Yeah. Chris, this, like, this brings up the question for me, at least. So uh, Verizon owned this spectrum and is in the 700 megahertz. And now it's being sold to AT&T. Uh, does that mean that I'll be able to use an AT&T phone on Verizon at some oh point God. in the future? You would like to think so, but the answer is most definitely Because no. it's illegal to unlock your phone. Well, it's it's illegal. To, it's illegal to unlock your phone. A and B. Uh, these are different blocks. So, seven hundred is divided into, into five blocks of spectrum that span a, a fairly significant amount of of bandwidth. There's A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, Verizon occupies the nationwide C block, but they also, for God only knows what reason, had a bunch of um, dormant B blocks sitting around. So they uh, which were hoarding, is, hoarding that B block. Yeah, so right. they could use it for the stupid national park horse trading. <laughs> for, for the stupid national park horse trading, that's right. And, and AT&T, uh, they used the B block. So okay. uh, it was a very convenient trade. But I do think it, it is, you know, the, these carriers are treating the spectrum, they're basically holding it hostage as an investment in many cases and not actually deploying it and using it the way it was meant to be used. And that is one of... Uh, my greatest frustrations as a, a writer in this industry is the fact that not you know these guys aren't using every last drop of spectrum that they can, while at the same time they're they're screaming from the highest hilltops about the, the quote unquote spectrum crunch. Yeah, I don't know why I'm all of a sudden hot under the collar about the spectrum thing now because there's certainly been worse shenanigans. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, like it's like you know okay I'm I'm. Nokia sold their headquarters and now they're renting it back. And mm -hmm. we've seen a bunch of companies do that and it's always a really bad sign, right? Right. Well, we're selling our spectrum and then renting it back. I mean, we could at least like still manage the building, right? Nokia is still hiring the janitors and they run the building. Uh, it's our spectrum, man. Just like the Everglades. Everglades <laughs> suck, though, so maybe. It's it. It's so a swampy morass filled with crocodiles. <laughs> Alligators and and and, and false hopes and lies and uh, pythons apparently and, too. And, the huge and, python and problem in the Everglades. Phones that uh, can't work on more than one carrier. Yeah. U.S. Spectrum is the Everglades. That's. Yeah. I think we can just leave it at that. It's hot, sticky. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that friends is a Verge Mobile show. We want to thank you so much for watching. If you want to watch us again next week, you probably can. Uh, if you want to leave a comment on the post, you can. And I believe the new plan is for it to be like one true post to rule them all. So just leave it on the post you're watching now. Or if you're listening to it, go find it. Uh, you can also send us an email. It's mobileshow at theverge.com. Uh, I am Backlon. Dan is DC Seifert with an EI. Chris is the power of Vlad is Vlad Savov. We're all at Verge. And we'll see you guys next week, probably. We'll see. See ya. Thanks, guys.